Hi, this is Piros Kostadinis, Hermanos Brilakis, and this is case 167 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating why deploying or crushing a lost stand may actually be preferable to trying to retrieve that stand. The patient was an older gentleman with previous coronary artery bypass graft surgery who had recurrent failure of a saphenous vein graft to the obtuse marginal branch and he was sent for recanalizing the native obtuse marginal CTO. This is the dual injection, and this is the saphenous vein graft that kept on having restenosis in the proximal segment. The native vessel, the obtuse marginal, is uh, occluded proximally with an ambiguous proximal cap. The length is long, about 50 millimeters. The distal vessel is of good quality, especially distal to the vein graft touchdown. And then there is retrograde access to the vessel through the patent saphenous vein graft. Our plan here was to first try to do undergrade wire escalation if we could decipher the ambiguity at the proximal cap, and if that did not work, to go retrograde through the saphenous vein graft. We did a brief attempt for undergrade crossing, but we failed, again due to ambiguity. We then had difficulty going retrograde through the saphenous vein graft, and this is a common problem when trying to wire retrograde through vein grafts. One potential solution is to use an angulated microcatheter, such as the Supercross and the Venture, and in our case, we did use the Venture along with the Sion Black that nicely went retrograde into that saphenous vein graft. And then we were able to switch the Sion Black for a more penetrating Gladius Mongo, polymer jacketed, stiff kite wire, which seemed to advance well and now is adjacent to the undergrade kite wire. We did a reverse card, inflating a balloon in the circumflex and advancing the retrograde Gladius Mongo guide wire, and that wire eventually went into the undergrade guide catheter. We predilated and now we restored undergrade flow to that obtuse marginal branch and then placed two drag eluting stents and that seemed to provide a nice result with flow into the OM. However, there was very heavy competitive flow through the saphenous vein graft and quite often in these cases we occlude the vein graft to minimize the competitive flow and reduce the potential risk of thrombosing the new stents that are placed in the CTO. So we did use a guide extension to deliver a 6 mm amplatzer vascular plug 2 to the vein graft. This is the guide extension. And then after deploying it, we did have a successful occlusion of the saphenous vein graft. This resulted in better flow undergrade. And now we observed that there was suboptimal result just proximal to the touchdown of the saphenous vein graft. So we decided to place an additional stand to cover this area. However, that stent uh, we tried to deliver did not uh, get, get through, and when we're trying to pull it back, it came off the balloon, and here is the stent now into the proximal circumflex. So we do have a case of stent loss, and the first question when this happens is whether the stent is located in the coronary artery or outside. In our case, it was in the coronary artery. The next question is whether we should uh, try to retrieve it or leave it in place and either deploy it or crush it. In this case, we decided to try to retrieve it because it was in the proximal circumflex. And the first technique for retrieving a stent is the so-called small balloon technique. What we do is we advance a small balloon through the lost stent, and then we inflate the small balloon, usually 1.0, 1.2, 1.5, inflate it distally, and then pull the balloon back, and that often brings the low, the low stand into the guide catheter. Unfortunately, this failed here, and likely the reason was that the stand was deformed, which was probably the cause of the stand being lost in the first place. So we then decided to actually uh, crush the stand, and we took a 3.0 by 20 millimeter balloon next to the lost stand, and then we inflated the balloon there and that crushed the stand. We actually did not place an additional stand to secure into place, which will become relevant in the subsequent slides. So we did crush the stand, and then we were able to deliver a new drag eluting stand using a guide extension, 2.75 by 15, and that was successfully delivered and deployed. However, when we're about ready to finish the case, 
we noticed that uh, the previously crushed stent had migrated from the proximal circumflex down towards uh, that area of the touchdown of the vein graft. Because that area was not perfectly expanded, we decided to give it an attempt for retrieving it. And this time we did use a snare. That was a 2 by 4 millimeter and snare that was um, moved uh, past the stand and then uh, we pulled it back and the snare actually did uh, capture the stand. And then we were able to try to bring it back a little bit, but we did have a lot of resistance. So we had to leave it over there. The problem is, once we take an angiogram, the lost stand is there, but also we now have a new problem, which is a perforation. So trying to retrieve the stand, which was likely deformed, resulted in injury of the coronary vessel and a perforation. What doing a perforation? The first step is to inflate a balloon, and for a large per vessel perforation like this one, typically this is done with a covered stent. There are two of them in the US right now, the PK Papyrus and Graftmaster, with the PK Papyrus being much more deliverable. So this was what we used here, with actually two goals. One, to seal the perforation, and the second, to secure in place, to trap the previously lost stent. And fortunately, we were able to deliver the papyrus in place, and then it was deployed, and that provided a nice result. We can see the lost end, it's alongside, just outside the papyrus, but now it's fixed in place, and we do not have uh, any more perforation. Again, we can see in another view the location of the lost end that has been crushed, but now it's securely held in place. So the summary from this case is that stand loss can happen, and we should not forget that uh, retrieval is an option, but also leaving it in place and crushing it or deploying it is an option. Stent deployment or crushing may actually be easier, faster, and have less risk of complications than trying to get the stent up. In this case, we could have deployed it, and that probably would have been the better approach, but instead we chose to crush it, but we did not use another stand to secure it in, in place where it was crushed, partially because it was next to the origin of the distal circumflex. So what happened is that the deformed stand that was crushed subsequently migrated down. We then used a snare to get it out, but uh, it was likely deformed, and when we were pulling it back, it did cause injury of the vessel and perforation, requiring placement of a covered stand. So whenever a stand is lost, the small balloon technique is a simple, easy technique, but if it doesn't work, then in most cases, if we still have wire access, the best way of action may be to deploy the stand to minimize having additional complications from stand retrieval attempts. Thank you.